I've got a notification saying that uh, we are live. So let me welcome uh, our, uh, all those who are sharing with us with, um, in our online worship this morning. Today uh, is um, uh, Father's Day, but uh, as others will remind me, it's just a, a card manufacturer's ploy to get you to spend money in a card shop. Um, but uh, I've had my card, so I'm all right. Um, going to welcome those who are joining me on screen. So that's Carol, Stephen, Catherine, Isabel, Linda, Sally and Jenny. And to welcome those uh, who will join us um, on Facebook. Uh, we're live now uh, for Father's Day, morning worship for Father's Day. And uh, in a moment, I will um, uh, put on the screen the, the, the service so that you can join us. Um, if you don't know, uh, we are coming live from St. Matthew's Church in Stretton, Anson Cross Church, Appleton Thorn, uh, two parishes south of Warrington in the Church of England Diocese of Chester. And uh, since our buildings are not able to hold public worship, um, we are uh, live streaming uh, services of prayer and worship. So let me just have a look. Oh, good morning, Jenny and Nev. Got comments and good morning, Jean. Oh, this is exciting. I'm glad to know that uh, you're out there and thank you for joining us. Um, we're still a minute away from half past ten, but uh, I will um, we'll start at about then. And uh, we will, um, uh, I'll, I'll put the, on the screen the order of service. So it's Father's Day and I'm going to use uh, an, an order of service that we've done um, uh, in real life. I mean, we've used this certainly at St Matthew's. I can't remember if we've done it at St Cross or not. Um, but uh, an order of service that's designed to help us think about um, not just our own dads, um, but to think about uh, God as our Father. So while we're waiting for people to join us, uh, and I know that there are a number of you out there already, and that number's going up, excellent, good stuff. Um, uh, I know we've got at least one birthday, Linda. Linda, you had your birthday. Uh, was it was it actually yesterday? She's probably muted. No, it was uh, Friday. It was Friday. Day after just to zoo on Friday, fabulous. Excellent stuff. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know you're a grown-up when you can go for a day out to Chester Zoo and not worry about it. I'm never going to be a grown-up, Alan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right, um, so I think that's 10.30 um, and um, uh, we're, we're missing our technician today, so I've got to do this myself. I've got to go and now find um, where my uh, screen with the, uh, with the service uh, is. And uh, just give me a second to set that up in the hope that it will work. There we are. So hopefully you can now see what I can see, which is uh, the opening screen, which says a service for Father's Day. Uh, today's date, of course, the 21st of June, 2020. And we are coming to you from St. Matthew's Church in Streatham and St. Cross, uh, Appleton Thorn. We are going to begin with a hymn. So um, uh, we welcome Catherine and Isabel. Catherine on piano, Isabel on trumpet. Uh, the hymn is, and the words will come up on the screen, so do please uh, join in and sing with us. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the words might not be familiar, but the tune um, is, I think it's Abbott's Lee. Da, 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 ba, da, ba, ba. I think it's that one. Uh, we'll see whether you can recognise it from my singing or not. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a hymn. Um, that uh, speaks of uh, God, our Father, as the Lord of all creation. Uh, so there's, uh, there's the title screen, uh, which tells me that it was written by Stuart Cross. Uh, Father, Lord of all creation. Father, 
Uh, thank you to Catherine and Isabel. Uh, the opening part of our service uh, are, is going to be led by Linda and Sally, so I'll hand over to them. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. See what love the Father has given us. That we should be called the children of God. You are my sons and daughters. This day I have begotten you. See what love the Father has given us. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God. See what love the Father has given us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Um, we're going to sing. Uh, today, in the normal scheme of things, would have been um, a service of all age worship at St. Matthew's. Uh, and this is one of the songs that we, we might well have sung uh, had we been meeting in church. Good morning uh, to those who are joining us. Um, and uh, it's a song, we, we sang this at, at Praise and Play on uh, Friday. We do, we've been doing Praise and Play on a Friday afternoon at two o'clock uh, here on Facebook and singing some of the songs that uh, we sing with uh, our children at Praise and Play. So this is a song called Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care. Uh, and uh, it reminds us that uh, on this Father's Day, uh, that actually all of us have a father in God. Uh, so this will this will this will test my skills because I'm going to be uh, clicking the uh, the words on at the same time as playing the ukulele, and uh, because I'm a ukulele and I'm not afraid to use it. Father God, I wonder. Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without the knowledge of. Thank you. 
forevermore. I hope you were singing along with me. Um, hi, Elodie. Uh, I hope, uh, I'm sure Elodie was singing. Were you singing? I hope you were. Um, we are next uh, going to have, uh, and good morning, Liz, as well. Let's see who else has said good morning. Um, I think I've acknowledged most people who've said hello, um, certainly than I can see on, uh, on my little screen there. So uh, we, we're going to have our Bible reading, just one reading today. Um, it is from uh, Luke 15, and it is um, the, the story of the prodigal son, um, which is one of those stories that's, that's I think, quite well known. Um, so just one reading, but we've, uh, we've split up, we've sort of done a, we're doing a dramatised reading of it, so different people will do different, different voices. Um, as we hear the story that Jesus told of the prodigal son. <coughs> this reading is from Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 to 32, the parable of the prodigal and his brother. Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pots that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then said, then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you've never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed a fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, thank you to our readers. Uh, well done for doing that. I think we probably should get some kind of uh, award for <laughs> the way that uh, we, we, we put these services together. That was great, thank you very much. Sorry, I got slightly distracted, my phone rang during the, the reading and um, I know my microphone wasn't muted, so apologies for that. 
um, it's a call that I will um, have to get back to after we have finished um, our live streamed worship. Uh, there's a few other good mornings come in. I can see Cheryl is there, uh, Rose Jewell. Good morning, Rose. Um, and Carolyn. And, uh, uh, and, and Cheryl says, well done, readers. Quite right, too. So um, let's, uh, let's have a look at today, Father's Day. I thought it was quite a nice picture uh, of uh, a father and uh, a, a child. Um, so happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I hope that uh, your kids are looking after you and being kind to you and all the other things that you want uh, on a day like today. Um, at the same time, we're also conscious that uh, Father's Day is a difficult day for some. Um, those who've lost fathers, uh, those who've lost children, uh, and those who are separated or estranged from family members. It can be a difficult day, a day like today, when we're supposed to all be celebrating how wonderful our families are. If you've got tensions, stresses and strains in your, fa in your family, um, as so many do. Uh, so we think also, as well as the, the, the great joy of uh, when it goes good, when it goes right, father and son, father and child, father and daughter, um, uh, we also think of those for whom this is a difficult day. Uh, when, when we say the Lord's Prayer, as we will do later on in this service, um, it's the prayer that Jesus gave us, we address God as Father, and that's so familiar. Um, we might say the Lord's Prayer, the, the Pater Noster, the Our Father, without ever thinking, you know, why that is significant. But actually, it takes us closer to Jesus than, and his understanding of God than almost anything else that we might say about God. Jesus calls God Father. Uh, and in the Lord's Prayer and elsewhere, he uses, um, uh, Jesus spoke Aramaic, that was his, his language, and he uses an Aramaic word, which is Abba. Um, no, not the 1970s uh, band from Sweden, but uh, a word Abba. It's a bit like the English word Dada, or uh, any, or lots of languages have these words for a father, and in Aramaic, uh, that would be spoken by a small child, um, and in Aramaic, um, it is Abba. Um, was translated into Greek as Pater, um, and and then into English as as father. Um, it's a word that is intimate and it implies relationship. Abba is used by young children of their father, but it's also used by adults uh, in the same way that Prince Charles uh, still calls the Queen mommy. Um, it doesn't. It means no disrespect. It can still be used, but it it it, it means intimate relationship. Uh, and, and actually what the Lord's Prayer puts together is the intimacy of a relationship with a dad, uh, but a father in heaven. So there's the respect and reverence. They're both there in the Lord's Prayer. So Abba is an intimate word, but it's not a childish word. At least it's not only a word that can be used by children. The point is that you don't express, you don't address an impersonal force as dad. Uh, therefore, God is not merely an impersonal force. God is a person with whom we can be in relationship. Uh, Abba is a word of relationship. Uh, now, the idea of God as father um, is found in the Old Testament, but it, it's relatively rare. Uh, and it tends to be used of the relationship between God and his people Israel, the whole nation. God is the father to the nation. Um, and the king, as, as the, the sort of representative of the nation, could sometimes address God as father and be referred to as God's son. Um, but the idea of an individual knowing God as father um, is not, it's not widespread, it's not prevalent until you get to Jesus. And with Jesus it is. So in um, Matthew, Mark and Luke, first three gospels in our Bibles, Jesus uses the word father for God 65 times. When you come to John's gospel, the fourth uh, in our Bibles, um, the uh, Jesus uses the word father for God over a hundred times. It is Jesus's preferred mode for speaking to and about God. Uh, and so there are some pictures of fatherhood, trying to go for uh, various different uh, depictions of fatherhood, but all nice and positive, uh, positive uh, pictures. The idea of God as father to an individual and the use of this word Abba to address God comes to us from Jesus and is definitively his way of talking to and about God. Now, obviously, Jesus's relationship with God is unique. Jesus is God's son in a, in a one-off uh, kind of way. And yet, 
what the gospel invites us to is a relationship with God in which we can address God as Abba, uh, not by not by right, as it were, but by being adopted into the family that Jesus has created. Uh, we are invited into a relationship with God that is not available elsewhere. It's not available outside of this invitation. Uh, we have no right to address God as Abba, but that is the gospel. It's what Jesus offers to us. So his relationship with God is his by definition. He is the son of God. But ours, uh, the New Testament tells us, is there uh, by adoption. We are adopted, as the song Father God that we sang a moment ago reminds us. Uh, so there we are. Uh, we are given this privilege, this uh, relationship, uh, to be in a relationship with the God of creation, the God who's the father of the universe, and to address God as Abba, Father, uh, in the same way that we might address our, uh, our earthly father as dad or daddy. Uh, this is how the New Testament puts it, Paul in his letter, St. Paul the Apostle in his letter to the church at Rome. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Um, just a kind of a, 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 a side note for those who like these kind of things. Um, Jesus probably spoke Aramaic. That was his language. He probably understood Greek. Um, when they came to write the New Testament, uh, the New Testament documents that we have were written almost entirely in Greek. And then every now and again, there are just a few Aramaic words that pop up because they couldn't quite find a, a way of putting it into Greek. And Abba is there and it stays in the English translation uh, because there wasn't quite the right way of rendering that in Greek or in English. And so um, the, the New Testament retains uh, just a very few Aramaic words, words genuinely spoken by Jesus. This is, these are the actual words of Jesus, Abba, uh, addressed to God. Uh, and so unlike um, the Old Testament, this view of God as Father, uh, it's throughout the New Testament, the idea that we are, uh, as people, uh, we can address God as our Father. We've been adopted into God's family, and we uh, can address God, not just as the Father of creation, the Father of the universe, but as, as Abba, as my Father. It is the distinctive way in which Christians understand their relationship with God. Uh, and so it is in, in the prodigal son. Um, prodigal, this is, a, a, this is a painting by Rembrandt that shows the son uh, being greeted uh, by his father. Uh, he's made his way back. You heard the story uh, read by uh, our brilliant readers. Uh, and there's uh, Rembrandt's rendering of uh, the son coming back to the father. Um, and the word prodigal means extravagant. It means wasteful. And we apply that to the son because uh, he takes his inheritance, which is basically he's telling his dad to drop dead. You know, I wish you were dead and then I'd have your money. It's kind of what he's saying. Uh, and he's, he wastes it all. He's extravagant. He's wasteful. But in a way, the point of the story is that the true prodigal, the truly extravagant one, is the father. Uh, in the culture in which Jesus is telling this story, and to some extent in our culture, uh, if you diss your parents, if you disrespect a parent, that father should rightly have said, I have no son. Well, he's still got the older son, but to the son who went away, the father should rightly have said, he's not my son. In fact, he says, he is dead. You're not my son anymore because you've disrespected me. That's absolutely how it should have been in the culture of his day. And to some extent, we can, we can acknowledge that uh, and uh, understand that today. And yet, the moment that the prodigal son, having wasted all his... Uh, um, all his uh, money, his wealth. The moment he turns back to make his way to the father, full of penitence and expecting to be given a job as a servant, a hired hand on the farm, the moment he does that, he finds a, a, a father whose love for him is extravagant. Rightly, he should have been disowned. Perhaps graciously, he could have been given a job as a servant. None of that. This is my son whom I love. Just as God talks about Jesus and to Jesus at his baptism on other occasions. This is my son whom I love. And Jesus tells us this story so that we know that that is what God is like. The word prodigal used as a criticism of the younger son 
uh, who has disobeyed his father and should rightly have been uh, chucked out, thrown out of the family, is welcomed back. Uh, the love that the father has for both his sons, the younger and the older, is extravagant. And we see that in the, the arrangements he makes to celebrate the, uh, the coming back to life of the son who rightly was dead to him. And so the prodigal son is the story, not just of a prodigal son, but of a father whose love for his child, for his children, for both of them, is extravagant. I know that talking about God as father is not without its problems. Uh, it, sometimes it, you have to assume that God is male and we know that God is God, which is neither male nor female. But it's a picture, isn't it? And it's the distinctive one that Jesus gives us. And as I've mentioned, um, some people find this a difficult way to talk about God, particularly if their own relationship with their father has been problematic. I mean, and we understand that. Nevertheless, Jesus offers to us a picture of God as the loving parent, caring and accepting all, uh, and including the prodigals, uh, those who've turned their backs on God, and the faithful older son, uh, those who have never known a time when they didn't uh, have God as their father. Uh, they both have a place in the family of God. We're going to declare our faith in God uh, using the words that will come up on the screen. Do please join in with the words in dark black type. Uh, Linda and Sally uh, will lead us in this, so I'm handing over to them. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us from power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we turn now to our prayers and uh, again uh, the, uh, the prayers will be led by um, uh, uh, the, the, the people who you've seen taking part in the service uh, so you'll hear all their voices and uh, I think you'll see a picture of them up in the top right hand corner of your screen uh, as they lead us in our prayers so uh, do please join in with the response there's a response in dark black type that you'll see as it comes up on the screen uh, so do please join in with those responses uh, as we are led in prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray to God, our Heavenly Father. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. Sovereign Lord, your Son has revealed you as our Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. You have made your church a spiritual family, a household of faith. Through baptism, we are reborn as brothers and sisters of Christ. Deepen our unity and fellowship in him. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. You sent your son to give his life as a ransom for the whole human family. Give justice, peace and harmony to the world he died to save. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. You gave your son a share of, in the life of the family in Nazareth. Help us to value our families, to be thankful for them and to live sensitively with them, within them. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. Your son drew round him a company of friends. Bring love and joy to all who are alone. Help us to find in the brothers and sisters of Christ a loving family. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. You are the God of the dead as well as the living. In confidence we remember those of the household whose faith, of faith who have gone before us, before us. Especially we remember Thomas Walsh and Nicky Holcroft. Bring us with them to the joy of your home in heaven. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your son Jesus, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, an earthly father. 
Bless all fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in the work they have to do, protecting those who look to them, as we look to you for love and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and defender. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, we are uh, uh, in the final part of our service, so uh, just some some notices to um, uh, to draw to your attention. Uh, you may have seen that um, the government says that churches can now reopen for private prayer. Uh, we're not opening for for services, but churches can <coughs> excuse me can open for private prayer. Um, so the fact that it is now allowed doesn't necessarily mean that all churches are now open all the time. In fact, uh, every church will have to make its own decisions about um, risk and about safety and about what we can manage. So um, let me tell you, and I've put subject to confirmation because things change. This is what I think is happening. Um, St Cross Church in Appleton Thorn will be opening uh, on a Sunday afternoon for an hour and on a Tuesday morning. St Matthew's will be opening again on a Sunday afternoon and on a Thursday morning. Um, and I've put there the hours when we're likely to be open, so two o'clock till three on the Sunday afternoon, and then for the Tuesday and Thursday mornings, probably 10.30 till 11.30. Um, but I'm, I'm going to emphasise again, it's subject to confirmation and it's subject to church wardens and others being convinced um, that we can do so safely. We are taking all um, precautions that are available to us with the resources that we've got. Uh, so if you want to um, go into St Matthew's or St Cross for a moment of prayer, um, do please contact a church warden or me as vicar and, um, and we can actually explain to you what will need to be done. Um, the other thing I need to just uh, emphasize really is that uh, you would be doing so at your own risk I mean if you go to the shops um, you know you've, you've got to take responsibility for your own health and well-being and that of others so um, we are offering the opportunity to to come into church for prayer um, not not for a chin wag not for social gatherings but for private prayer um, and you'll need to contact us um, in order to make those arrangements uh, if you want to know more, do please have a word with a, a church warden or with me. Uh, other notices, uh, we are still doing our online uh, worship and prayer and other events. So on Wednesday, we've got uh, the reflection that Linda has been doing Wednesday evening at 7.30. Thursday afternoon, I can't believe it's the singing kettle again. Um, uh, I have a, a ukulele and I'm not afraid to use it, as I've already said. Um, so on Thursday afternoon at two o'clock, I'll be leading a sing-along. I haven't even decided a theme or anything yet, so who knows what we'll be singing. If you've got any requests, um, apart from throw the ukulele away, um, <laughs> do please get in touch. Uh, but join us on Facebook, two o'clock on Thursday afternoon for the Singing Kettle. Friday afternoon, praise and play, children's songs uh, from two o'clock. And then we'll be here next Sunday morning at 10.30 for morning worship. Um, as we have been today. Um, all being well, the, um, the recording of this morning's worship will go, you'll be able to see it on Facebook after we've finished, um, and also there will be a version of it that will turn up on, on YouTube at some point. There's a bit of work to be done before it ends up on YouTube. Uh, but that's, uh, those are the notices, um, and uh, we are going to next um, uh, sing another hymn, uh, our hymn, uh, is to God be the glory, uh, great Francis Crosby hymn, and uh, this will, and then after this we have the closing uh, words of our service. But do please join in 
with our final hymn, To God Be the Glory. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are called and loved by God the Father and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace and love be ours in abundance. From God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way. To God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forever. Amen. <laughs>